What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Learning Intelligence. It's your boy, Daniel Burke, and we are here today. We're learning, we're doing the next lesson in the Artificial Intelligence Voice User Interface course. I've been going through just uh, the intro to speech recognition. Where's the mouse? I should have got that ready. Intro to speech recognition, there we go. Plenty of glare on the screen because the sun is turned right up. But it is time for me to make a phone call. I'm a little bit late, I've got one minute late, but that's all right, we'll get onto it. A friend on here, reached out on LinkedIn and wants to know if I would be willing to assist him in writing some books on AI. So I'm gonna call him now. I'll see if I can record the phone call on the video. If not, well, I'll just tell you how it goes anyway. Let's see what happens. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. How are you? Excellent, thank you, mate. Uh, just as a heads up, I make like a, a weekly video. Do you mind if I like record myself on uh, on on the phone to you and, and potentially put it in a, a YouTube clip? I didn't want it to be. Uh, recorded, but that's that's perfectly fine. What was the presence of the phone call about? Well, essentially someone had been reading my LinkedIn profile and then reached out to me asking if I'd be interested in a potential copywriting role, as in as in being a writer, for an upcoming book they want to do as part of their, as what, is, what their company works on. And so it's a company that works on machine learning and whatnot, and they're partnered with B2B, and the founder is looking to work on an, uh, a book, per se, to, to give to, to people in the B2B world uh, so they can understand how to use machine learning models and, and the, the ethics behind them and whatnot. So that's a really cool opportunity. I'm going to send some of the writing I've done in the past to and, and see where it goes from there. If I find out anything more in the future, it might turn into nothing. It may, it may turn into something. I'm not entirely sure, but I'll let you know. And just as a, as a question, like a heads up to you guys, have you read any of my stuff? Like if you have, leave a comment below. And if you, if you haven't, would you like to read something from me or do you prefer video? Uh, I love writing, I love making video, but if you wanna see an article or a video of any sort, don't, don't forget, leave a comment below. I'm gonna get back into some, some voice user interface learning and we'll catch up soon. I've been hounding LinkedIn over the past few videos or so, but that's just another example of how these opportunities, they just they just arise out of nowhere. It seems like they arise out of nowhere, but really it's it's the, the putting yourself out there, guys. I can't recommend it enough. These opportunities, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to start saying no to some because I wanna keep working on, on what I've been working on. I mean, I know I'm trying to get into the field and whatnot, so I should be saying yes to a lot of things, but ultimately, what you say no to is gonna decide decide where you end up. So that's that's my thoughts on the topic. If if you're putting yourself out there, doing awesome work, people will find you, make them find you. Alexa, 25 minute timer. 25 minutes, starting now. Alexa, stop the timer. That was a really good study session. Let me show you what I've been working on. So as I said in the previous clip, I'm going through the voice user interface classes in the AI nano degree. And I just finished this class here. So introduction to speech recognition. Let's dive in, I'll show you where I'm up to. I've gone through all the lectures so far. I kind of, like I always do as I go through them first and then like in a fast pace, and then go back through them later if there's anything I don't really understand. But I've jumped back into number 13, which is the voice lab with voice data. So essentially we're going through and exploring Libri speech corpus quiz, or no, sorry, the Libri speech corpus of data, which I believe is an open source corpus of data of people reading audiobooks. So I'm doing a few questions around that. There might be some code and whatnot. I haven't dived too far into it, but essentially the next step after I finish this lab is the, the voice user interfaces capstone. And I'll quickly go through that in the Jupyter notebook. If we look up here, we've got a bunch of tasks that we're going to have to do. So here we go. Project. Speech recognition with neural networks. Essentially, we're building an end-to-end -end deep learning speech recognition network. Now, what does that mean? Well, just like how Alexa works, how, how before we set a timer. Alexa? Yes, I'm here. Alexa, don't worry. <laughs> 
So how does that happen? How does how does a smart speaker register your voice? It has to be listening all the time and then how does that turn that voice into a command to do an action? That's what I'm gonna be working on is creating my own deep learning voice recognition system to translate something into text. So there's a few steps in that pipeline and I'll quickly show you what's going on. We have speech. And with speech, it gets turned into features, and then features get turned into an acoustic model. Acoustic model gets turned into phonemes, which is essentially uh, little sound bites that make up words. Then the words get passed to the language model, then it gets passed to text. So there's a fair few steps here for, for what seems like um, it could be a relatively simple process, but believe me, it's anything but. And last thing to finish off this video, is this video here. I'll link it in the description so you can see it too. It's Deep Learning for Speech Recognition by Adam Coates from Baidu. And now this is what the project is based on, this speech here, this, this talk he gave at a conference. And it's published two years ago now, or just under two years. It's essentially what kicked off the whole speech, deep learning speech recognition revolution. And now I want to show you something on the graph. Now, voice user interfaces have been around for a while. It's always been a dream. Oh, look at this message from my brother. Thanks, Sam. Love you too. It's always been a dream for people to, to be able to talk to a computer. I've been seeing Samantha. She's an operating system. You're dating in OS? What is that like? I feel really close to her. Like, when I talk to her, I feel like she's with me. Mm-hmm. Now, this was one of my favorite takeaways from the talk. So what we have here is accuracy versus data model and size. And now I'll show you traditional models first, traditional voice recognition systems. So they start off pretty well, right? They keep going, but as more data and the model size increases, they kind of teeter off here at the end and just, they don't really, they don't really improve that much past a certain point, even if you add more data. Whereas deep learning models, maybe, maybe they don't start off as accurate. So they start here, but they take a while to get to get very good. But then as the data size increases, deep learning starts to take off, starts to surpass traditional models. We go past there. And now what the VUI Capstone project is working on is an end-to-end -end deep learning model. So this one here, this, this first iteration of a deep learning model, was only subbing out little pieces of this pipeline with deep learning at a time. But what the talk was about was introducing end-to-end -end deep learning, and that's where we're at now. I mean, it's 2018, and we, this is, this is the, the state of the art now. And so, how does that model go? Well, it starts off just like, just like our first deep learning model. May not be as good, but then it just rockets off the charts. Gets better, 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 better. As you add more data, right here, the model keeps going up and up and up in accuracy. And now what's model size? Well, model size can depend. It, it means if you look at a neural network as a series of layers, model size could be uh, more layers or increased connections between those layers. And now what are the two best ways to improve a, a deep learning model? Well, number one, of course, is to get more data or get better data. And that's, that's what we've had in this, this little x-axis here. All right, we've got a bit more memory. So that's, that's a good metaphor for the second way to improve your deep learning model, is to throw more computational power at it. And now how can you do that? Well, you can either make the model size bigger and then add more GPUs. Now what's a GPU? A GPU is a graphical processing unit. And that's, that's where we've had this, this inflection point over the last couple of years. It's the introduction of more data, better data, well, that's, that's still one point by the way, and more computing power through GPUs, through cloud computing and whatnot. And that's how we've got here. That's how we've got to, to up here, the state of the art. That's how Alexa, that's how Google Home, that's how all these new voice recognition, voice to text systems work, is, is from using end-to-end -end deep learning. And now, will there be another way to, to improve it over time? Can we make this graph go <whistles> up through the stratosphere? Probably, but not, not as of yet, at the moment, end-to-end -end deep learning is the state of the art. And so that's what I'm gonna be working on with the, the Voice User Interfaces Capstone Project, is building my own end-to-end -end deep learning speech recognition system. And of course, once I'm done or throughout the project, I'll update you and my code will be on GitHub once it's finished. But check the links below for, for anything 
uh, that I've mentioned throughout the show. I'll put it all through there so you can learn as well. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And as always, keep learning. We'll see you next week.